computer simulation has developed new fields, but partial differential equations have been up to now what people use to describe phenomena from our daily life. Membrane elasticity, fluid flow, insulation, base pricing. There is a universality of these problems and and so it is nice because it is a, a constant challenge. I was raised in a very modest family in Argentina. His dad had studied technical design. The sign signature says Luis Caffarelli. He did it when he was 22. My father, in some sense, was, uh, from when I was a kid, proposed me nice problems. I went to uh, high school. The team is very selective and you have to pass exams. Lewis studied maths at the prestigious University of Buenos Aires. Mathematics will accept some of the basic course in physics. Physics was very beautiful, but it had a touch of non being serious enough. Mathematics is black and white, <laughs> you know, or you prove it or you don't prove it. Obtaining his PhD in maths in harmonic analysis, Caffarelli got a fellowship in 1973 to go to the University of Minnesota in the US. There was very top people doing partial differential equations at that time. He took a course on harmonic functions given by a retired professor. It was a beautiful course and I asked him, for some problems, and he gave me something that he has done on the obstacle problem. I started from scratch, and I became fascinated. He soon began producing major papers on the obstacle problem, which became one of his main contributions to maths. He applies an old equation, the Laplacian. So you have a domain, right? And you have a little hill, right? and you want to spend the least money in covering it. When the membrane doesn't touch the obstacle, the Laplacian of you is zero. And when it touches here, it's bending down. So the Laplacian of you is negative. What I prove is that the solution is smooth when it separates smoothly, and that this curve is a smooth curve is the minimum of all the super solutions. He has unusual intuition. He could take ideas and put them together in a way that no one would think about. You have a balloon and you push it, right? Then if the surface below is not a plane, right? Then you can have parts which are a nice shape, but then you have what is called singularities, a bunch of little points. What can you say about the singularities? I didn't know what to do until like 15 years later, I was flying to, uh, to Japan, right? And I realized I could apply another formula. Another obstacle problem is free boundary, such as the Stefan problem, the melting of a solid. This is like a container. Here I have ice and here I have water. I start to hit this place so the temperature of the water will rise and start melting the ice. The surface is evolving, right, pushing the ice away. So you have the law that says that the speed with which the uh, water advances is proportional to the slope of the temperature. So for the Stefan problem, you would like to see this nice surface which moves with the velocity that satisfies this law. That's what the end of my theory. My thing is problems that have phase transition, which are given in a non-clear way, really can be realized in a nice mathematical way. This phased transition solution can also be applied to optimal insulation. Your home, T equal to one. You are given here the the set of insulation material that you can spread around here that have this volume. What you want to optimize is the, the flow of heat towards the boundary. That means you have to minimize the temperature on this surface. 
That would be the solution of the optimization problem. Another of Caffarelli's obstacle problems is integral diffusion, such as salt going through a cell membrane. This is an integral diffusion along the surface. Uh, prove that the contact sets have a nice uh, separation, a higher regularity of the solution, and uh, so then it became a big theory about fractional Laplacian's problem. Fractional PDEs is a very hot subject these days. Louis is an authority on the subject and published a number of papers that had, has, uh, have had a, a tremendous impact. A lot of my papers have been about filling the gap between what you can build just by general uh, considerations and you would like to see. I had a great time in Minnesota. Over a decade there, he rose to become full professor. In 1980, Lewis joined the Courant Institute in New York University, where he collaborated on the Navier-Stokes model. The Navier-Stokes equation describes the flow of an incompressible liquid, like water would be, but that has viscosity. You have a particle that is flowing at this velocity, and suppose that the surrounding particles go at a smaller velocity than that will break the speed. We show that if the solution of Navier-Stokes equation happens to have singularities, these singularities cannot cover even a curve in space and time. So that means that basically you will never see them. Navier-Stokes is uh, using numerical simulations all over the world thousands of times a day. Luis works help us to ensure that the numerical uh, solutions that we get are actually meaningful representations of reality. Many of the fundamental models of the universe were put forth by a scientist, and some of these models were completely wrong. Luis Caffarelli has been instrumental in making sure that the models of physics are on rigorous mathematical grounds. In the late 1990s, Lewis considered an offer from the University of Texas in Austin. We looked up in the sky, and there was a Halley comet, and I told Lewis, that's a sign. It means you should come to Texas, and he did. The department has 55 tenure faculty. These, the spirit had. We're extremely proud of Lewis one of the best mathematicians in our lifetime. He's one of our, um, you know, one of our, our dearest uh, colleagues who, uh, who helps us all in many, in many ways. Famous mathematicians are not very approachable. With Louis, he's a very, very nice person, always ready to talk to you, even if you come uh, with stupid questions. Our students love him. He's a good teacher. Lewis's wife, Irena, is in the faculty of the university's Institute of Computational Engineering and Sciences. They made us a very appealing package. Irena's work is related to statistical mechanics and numerical analysis. What he does is very hard, very unique, very innovative. What you are doing is as complex and as hard. He and uh, his wife, Helena, has made this place really like a family. They have a very good environment for the younger generation of mathematicians. I have uh, many postdocs and I share ideas with all of them and they collaborate among them. So I'm glad of having created this community of people. He brings them into his house with Irina, both of them, and they have many, many social events, dinners. Irena also studied maths in the Buenos Aires University. He was well known in Buenos Aires and was doing a, a, a spectacular career. In 1982, Irena went to Minnesota for her PhD. That's where we met again, and we were... Sort of, yeah, I guess, you can tell it. 
The couple married after Lewis briefly joined the University of Chicago in the 1980s. They have Alejandro from Lewis's previous marriage, and Irene gave birth to two more sons while she completed her PhD studies. He is an he, he, he still are, but he has been, when they were babies, an extraordinary father. I may be home taking care of the children, they were okay, I will sit on the table and do some work, help them to have free time to work. The couple took turns commuting for a few years after Lewis joined the Institute of Advanced Study in Princeton in 1986, and Irena's fellowships took her to Indiana and New York. Luis would take me every morning to the train station, and then you would drop Nico in daycare, and then it was the nursery school, mm -hmm. and he would come and pick me up at 6.30. Luis has a large family back in Argentina. We still have a strong emotional connection with all of them. I will uh, spend long parts of the year <laughs> there when I retire. Hot summers, I will go and spend them in Mar del Plata by the sea. And of course, also, I will spend good chunks with my children, which are spread, so I will go. Alejandro is a lawyer, Nico a molecular biologist, and Moro a medical doctor. Would you ever retire? Well, I guess, yeah. <laughs> I'll take the life as it comes. Even if I retire, if I can still chat mathematics with young people, I'll keep doing it. If at some moment my mind is not much for that, then I'll slowly stop.